Well, uh, let's continue our discussion about the uh, about the article as you know titled your beyond language learning perspectives on materials design. And in this regard, now we're going to see the views about language learning, how the views about the language learners are demonstrated in the materials design. That's the subtopic that we're going to discuss now, All right? Well, the researchers in this article, their argument that most how materials actually view language learners. But most of the materials as, you know, analyzed by these researchers is that they view language learners as empty vessels or empty bucket. I mean, uh, the empty vessels and they could be filled in by lot of information, lot of input by the teacher in the classroom. And, and in this regard, Within this framework, the main emphasis is on, uh, you know, teaching language with the help of rules, some lexical patterns, and the style, the structure of the language. And if we want to analyze these materials, we could better understand if, if we just look at an exercise or a task requiring students to gap fill or, uh, you know, gap filling exercises or pattern practice drills, what they demonstrate, what they indicate. Little John and Wendy, they argue that such type of exercises or tasks demonstrate learners as passive recipients of language learning. Well, um, there has been uh, debates going on between language acquisition and language learning. And in this regard, of course, observation by this uh, a researcher here, if we acquire language, we, we don't exercise intellect. It's, it's beautiful. Only when we learn is the intellect engaged. So this is how that it's, I mean, the writer here differentiates between acquiring the language and learning it, and how materials actually present language learning, whether it needs to be acquired or learned. For example, if, it, if the materials emphasize, lay emphasis on learning the language, this could motivate the learners to become active, uh, you know, learners. And if, if it's the element of acquiring it, they might be uh, seen as passives or empty vessels. So that's the argument presented here. Again, you might, you know, within your capacity, you might differ with the argument, right? Um, there has been different views of learners, and uh, and one of the views is if we expose language learners to the input or to the to the linguistic items themselves, the lang they might learn the language naturally. So this is how we might involve them, engage them, we're doing things with the language, and you know we might pose them some problems to be resolved, some tasks to be done, rather becoming, you know, bringing in, rather bringing some gap filled or pattern practice drills in the classroom. So, I mean, the question arises, what about the question of grammar then? How could we, uh, if we just bring in some materials which are communicative in nature, how can we address the issue of grammar? Well, um, you know, this is this question is, is for you to reflect how can we bring in grammar in the classroom, whether we could bring in some tasks simultaneously to teach grammar alongside uh, teaching language naturally. Right. So the views of language learning as projected in the materials design, if we look at in the Pakistani context, we've got some materials, especially in the state-run schools, if we look at, you know, the guidelines for textbooks writers as described in the official document, uh, which is National Language Curriculum for English Language Teaching 2006. I mean, it sees language learning as very much, you know, uh, based on acquiring the rules, the patterns, the drills. But, uh, and this is how the materials, I mean, see could be uh, could perceive language learning itself. I mean, it 
if materials are, you know, they expose the uh, learners to the input, they, they might be, uh, exp uh, you know, demonstrating learners as active uh, learners or on the other hand, passive learners.